elected in 1960 as the 35th President of the United States, 43-year-old John Fitzgerald Kennedy became one of the youngest U.S. presidents, as well as the first Roman Catholic. He was born into one of America's wealthiest families and parlayed an elite education and a reputation as a military hero into a successful run for Congress in 1946 and for the Senate in 1952. As president, Kennedy confronted mounting Cold War tensions in Cuba, Vietnam and elsewhere. He also led a renewed drive for public service and eventually provided federal support for the growing civil rights movement. His assassination on November the 22nd, 1963 in Dallas, Texas, sent shockwaves around the world and turned the all too human Kennedy into a larger than life heroic figure. To this day, historians continue to rank him among the best loved presidents in American history. Born on May the 29th in 1917 in Brookline, Massachusetts, John F. Kennedy, known as Jack, was the second of nine children. His parents, Joseph and Rose Kennedy, were members of two of Boston's most prominent Irish Catholic political families. Despite persistent health problems throughout his childhood and teenage years, he would later be diagnosed with a rare endocrine disorder called Addison's disease. Jack led a privileged youth, attending private schools such as Canterbury and spending summers in Hyannisport on Cape Cod. Joe Kennedy, a hugely successful businessman and an early supporter of Franklin D. Roosevelt, was appointed chairman of the Securities and Exchange Commission in 1934 and in 1937 was named U.S. Ambassador to Great Britain. As a student at Harvard University, Jack traveled in Europe as his father's secretary. His senior thesis about Britain's unpreparedness for war was later published as an acclaimed book called Why England Slept in 1940. Jack joined the US Navy in 1941 and two years later was sent to the South Pacific where he was given command of a patrol torpedo or PT boat. In August 1943, a Japanese destroyer struck the craft PT-109 in the Solomon Islands. Kennedy helped some of his marooned crew back to safety and was awarded the Navy and Marine Corps Medal for Heroism. His older brother Joe Jr. was not so fortunate. He was killed in August 1944 when his Navy airplane exploded on a secret mission against a German rocket launching site. A grieving Joe Sr. told Jack it was his duty to fulfill the destiny once intended for Joe Jr. to become the first Catholic President of the United States. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, make sure you give it a like and subscribe to remember this if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all of our latest content. Abandoning plans to be a journalist, Jack left the Navy by the end of 1944. Less than a year later, he was back in Boston, preparing for a run for Congress in 1946. As a moderately conservative Democrat and backed by his father's fortune, Jack won his party's nomination handily and carried the most working class 11th district by nearly three to one over his Republican opponent in the general election. He entered the 80th Congress in January 1947 at the age of 29 and immediately attracted attention, as well as some criticism from older members of the Washington establishment for his youthful appearance and relaxed and formal style. Kennedy won re-election to the House of Representatives in 1948 and 1950, and in 1952 ran successfully for the Senate, defeating the popular Republican incumbent Henry Cabot Lodge Jr. On September the 12th, 1953, Kennedy married the beautiful socialite and journalist Jacqueline or Jackie Lee Bouvier. Two years later, he was forced to undergo a painful operation on his back. While recovering from the surgery, Jack wrote another best-selling book, Profiles and Courage, which won the Pulitzer Prize for Biography in 1957. After nearly earning his party's nomination for vice president under Adlai Stevenson in 1956, 
Kennedy announced his candidacy for president on January 2nd, 1960. He defeated a primary challenge from the more liberal Hubert Humphrey and chose the Senate Majority Leader Lyndon Johnson of Texas as his running mate. In the general election, Kennedy faced a difficult battle against his Republican opponent, Richard Nixon, a two-term vice president under the popular Dwight D. Eisenhower. Offering a young, energetic alternative to Nixon and the status quo, Kennedy benefited from his performance and telegenic appearance in the first ever televised debates, watched by millions of viewers. In November's election, Kennedy won by a narrow margin, less than 120,000 out of some 70 million votes cast, becoming the youngest man and the first Roman Catholic to be elected President of the United States. With his beautiful young wife and their two small children, Caroline born in 1957 and John Jr. born just weeks after the election, Kennedy lent an unmistakable aura of youth and glamour to the White House. In his inaugural address, given on January the 20th, 1961, the new president called on his fellow Americans to work together in the pursuit of progress and the elimination of poverty, but also in the battle to win the ongoing Cold War against communism around the world. Kennedy's famous closing words expressed the need for cooperation and sacrifice on the part of the American people. Ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. An early crisis in the foreign affairs arena occurred in April 1961, when Kennedy approved the plan to send 1,400 CIA-trained Cuban exiles in an amphibious landing at the Bay of Pigs in Cuba, intended to spur a rebellion that would overthrow the communist leader Fidel Castro. The mission ended in failure, with nearly all of the exiles captured or killed. That June, Kennedy met with Soviet leader Nikita Khrushchev in Vienna to discuss the city of Berlin, which had been divided after World War II between Allied and Soviet control. Two months later, East German troops began erecting a wall to divide the city. Kennedy sent an army convoy to reassure West Berliners of US support and would deliver one of his most famous speeches in West Berlin in June 1963. Kennedy clashed again with Khrushchev in October 1962 during the Cuban Missile Crisis. After learning that the Soviet Union was constructing a number of nuclear and long-range missile sites in Cuba that could pose a threat to the continental United States, Kennedy announced a naval blockade of Cuba. The tent standoff lasted nearly two weeks before Khrushchev agreed to dismantle Soviet missile sites in Cuba in return for America's promise not to invade the island and the removal of US missiles from Turkey and other sites close to Soviet borders. In July 1963, Kennedy won his greatest foreign affairs victory when Khrushchev agreed to join him and Britain's Prime Minister Harold Macmillan in signing a nuclear test ban treaty. In Southeast Asia, however, Kennedy's desire to curb the spread of communism led him to escalate US involvement in the conflict in Vietnam, even as privately he expressed his dismay over the situation. Kennedy was an enormously popular president, both at home and abroad, and his family drew famous comparisons to King Arthur's Court of Camelot. His brother Bobby served as his Attorney General, while the youngest Kennedy son Edward, or Ted as he was known, was elected to Jack's former Senate seat in 1962. Jackie Kennedy became an international icon of style, beauty and sophistication. Though stories of her husband's numerous marital infidelities and his personal association with members of organized crime would later emerge to complicate the Kennedy's idyllic image. On November the 22nd, 1963, the president and his wife landed in Dallas. He had spoken in San Antonio, Austin and Fort Worth the day before. From the airfield, the party then traveled in a motorcade to the Dallas Trademark, the site of Jack's next speaking engagement. 
Shortly after 12.30 p.m., as the motorcade was passing through downtown Dallas, shots rang out. Kennedy was struck twice in the neck and head and was pronounced dead shortly after arriving at a nearby hospital. 24-year-old Lee Harvey Oswald, known to have communist sympathies, was arrested for the killing but was shot and fatally wounded two days later by local nightclub owner Jack Ruby while being led to jail. Almost immediately, alternative theories of Kennedy's assassination emerged, including conspiracies run by the KGB, the Mafia and the US military, among others. A presidential commission led by Chief Justice Earl Warren concluded that Oswald had acted alone, but speculation and debate over the assassination have persisted. Now it's time to hear from you. Do you have a theory or an idea of what happened on that fateful day in Dallas back in 1963? Let us know in the comments below. And if you haven't already done so, click the bell icon to stay updated on all of our latest content.